my name is Bernie Kubiak. I live in Amherst, Massachusetts. Uh, I've been in Western Mass for uh, for quite some time. I grew up uh, in Western New York, south of Buffalo. Uh, I've been doing pho making photographs since uh, I was a teenager, really, uh, with uh, a gap of a few years in there when my camera got destroyed by uh, in a freak accident, and then um, I was given a gift of a new camera and got back into photography. Uh, my background, academic background, is not in art or art history. It's in um, it's in history and economics and public policy. So I'm uh, I'm self-taught is in terms of a, of a photographer. I'm very much an amateur. I do sell uh, work from time to time, but I'm, it's not my uh, it's not my day job. In fact, I have no day job. I'm now retired. Um, I've been uh, fortunate because I've got a number of friends and associates who are very skilled photographers who range from professional to amateur who've been willing to share and talk and interact and critique and just basically help push my photography along. One of the sources for me of, of kinship, if you will, with other photographers has been the, uh, the, the Pioneer Valley Photographic uh, uh, Association Artists, PVPA, uh, the Pioneer Valley Photographic Artists. We've been around for uh, longer, actually, than the Valley Photo Center, uh, and, and it was a product of, 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 of love and affection for, uh, uh, for photography of all sorts that brought the group together, um, prompted by uh, Les Campbell and, uh, uh, and a few others. And I've been pleased to be part, I've been part of that from uh, the very start, and it's a great group. Uh, we've got uh, around 50 members. We meet once a month and put up images and talk and critique about them. We also have the opportunities to, um, to form other, uh, other groups, go off and do other things. It's a great resource for folks who are interested in photography and, and want to learn and, um, and, and benefit from the companionship of other photographers. Um, I'm pretty eclectic in terms of my approach to photography. I started out doing street photography. I like that. I still do some street photography uh, as, as, as time and place allows. Uh, a lot of what I do now is landscape, and I settled on landscape uh, almost by accident. It's, uh, I, I had set myself up when I was working. I set myself up with an assignment to make photographs within two miles of my house. And the two mile limit uh, was imposed because it was either a very easy drive or a short walk for me with a backpack full of equipment to, to, to get out every morning and to make some images. What I have around me in, in Amherst is some varying terrain. Um, and I began to look at, uh, uh, at trees, there's some abandoned orchards. Uh, they had some very odd shapes to them. Uh, throw in that, throw in some foggy mornings, and I began to, to really uh, look at the landscape uh, and, and, and make, and not to specialize, but to make that the, the, the basis for the, the self-assignment. So I've kind of continued that. In terms of photographers who uh, influenced me, I mean, Lee Friedlander is, I think Friedlander probably invented anything that's modern in photography. So I'm very much a Lee Friedlander fan. I'm very much a Gene Smith fan. Neither of those, uh, and, and Gary Winogrand, none of whom are in any way, manner, or form um, considered landscape photographers. But their, uh, their philosophy, uh, particularly Winogrand's philosophy, that uh, the, the photograph, the thing photographed has to be more interesting than the thing itself, it really kind of informed what I do. I also like, um, as, as painters, uh, Charles Sheeler, Edward Hopper, uh, and then the romantic side of me leans towards the... Uh, the Hudson River School. So there's a, 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 a jumble of, of influences in there. Um, I have a personal style, so I'm told it's evolving. It's things that, uh, that, that impress me, uh, that cause me to make a photograph. I sometimes will, uh, I very seldom uh, will go out with the intent to make a specific photograph. I don't, um, I would not be a great studio photographer. I'm not really good at creating a uh, creating a scene and setting it up. I do um, at times go out with the intent. You know, it's a lovely morning. The sunlight looks great. 
Uh, there may be a little fog. Uh, uh, let's go see if I can use those elements. That's one thing. The other thing that happens is just it's just purely happenstance. I come across something that I like um, that, that sort of turns me on, and I make a photograph. Um, sometimes I realize pretty quickly that this is going to be a good image. Other times it, the image will sit on my hard drive of my computer for weeks, months, before I pull it up and, and use it. Making photographs is always bound up with the equipment, maybe more so than, than any, other, any other art form. Your equipment sort of sets the stage for what you can, uh, you can do, what you might want to do, what you can't do. Um, the photographs I make now are very different from the photographs I was making some 40 years ago. I could use the equipment I have right now to replicate what I was doing 40 years ago. And in fact, I, I do do that sometimes with a very straight kind of nature photograph uh, or with my street photography. Uh, but over time, as the technology changed, so did my uh, view of things, if you will, and my ability to, uh, to, to, to shape an image. Um, one of the things that uh, was great for me is I was never a strong darkroom worker. I was okay with black and white. I didn't have a color darkroom. I was always dependent on other people to do my printing. Um, and some of those folks were very good at it, and some of those folks weren't. So it was a hit or miss, propos hit or miss proposition. What uh, the new technology, the current technology, allows me to do <clears throat> is to, to uh, do things in terms of, of a, creating an image, but also in terms of printing the image they simply wasn't able to do before. So uh, there's, there's been a lot of change and a lot of, uh, of, of variation in what I've, I've been able to do that's been driven by, driven by the technology. That said, I still own film cameras. I have a pinhole camera. I have a Holga. Do I use them from time to time? Yes. Uh, but do I print them in the darkroom anymore? No. If I make an image on film, it gets scanned and, uh, and, and, and put into the, the computer like all the rest of my work. I, I began um, in the sort of the second phase of my uh, adult photography, uh, or my time as an adult photographer, uh, moving away from the street stuff, uh, looking at doing nature and using slide film. Uh, and I began to understand that with slides, you could sandwich them. So um, one of the images that's here is a very early image I made, um, it's subtitled Buffalo at the time of my brother's death. It's really a sandwich of two slides. One is the Buffalo skyline that I photographed from a hospital. Um, the other is a superimposed over it is an image of some woodlands from the Quabbin. And when you look at it, um, people look at it, they don't see the components. What they see is a graveyard. And, and that was, um, it was something that I, I realized that I could do and began to experiment sandwiching slides, having an internegative made from the sandwich slides and then printing from that. Um, digital allows me to, to, to slice and dice images as I choose. I don't use Photoshop for probably 90% of what it's capable of doing, but it's, uh, it, it's given me the, the ability to, to find a different voice and, and to, uh, to do some things that are a little bit different with my images. A number of the images that I have here are infrared images, and infrared was something I tried to do with film cameras and failed repeatedly um, at, because the film had to be handled just in such a way it was fussy. Um, and again, I wasn't that good of a darkroom worker. Um, some time ago, I took a, a Fuji E900 point-and-shoot camera and had it converted to, uh, to, to an infrared camera. And it's a simple process, um, but you can now photograph light that isn't visible to us. And I've been having some, uh, uh, some, some fun times with that, uh, that little camera and making some images, some of which I have here, some of our straight um, black and white infrared. Others uh, involve uh, uh, color swaps, so they're, they're, they're false color. And it, it's given me the opportunity to do some things, again, that I had Tried with film and, and failed at. It's now given me the opportunity to do some things, and, and I'm successful with them. Um, the other pieces that I have here all involve uh, use of textures and texture overlays in, in Photoshop, so that again it causes a different kind of 
a different kind of feel to the image, uh, a different kind of look, um, and um, in, in some cases it's a bit more, more painterly, in some cases it's a bit more abstract. My, uh, my approach to photography, I always thought, because I, I don't work in the studio and I, I don't do um, composites, I'm, I'm out looking for images, is there's really two polar cases. There's the Ansel Adams case where you pre-visualize everything and everything just sort of works out in the darkroom. And then on the other side, you have the Cartier-Bresson approach, which is you're off hunting and you're looking for that decisive moment. Uh, my experience with the photographic world is, uh, is those two are polar cases and I'm somewhere in between. Uh, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll uh, go to a place where I think I can uh, create a, an interesting image and, and at, a right, at the right time, and the, the right uh, circumstances, because all of my photography is outdoor photography. I, I work completely with natural light. Um, other times, you know, if you're in the street or even if you're just in, in, uh, in nature, you, you'll find something, something will happen. And it, it's almost a grab shot that gets uh, refined later to, to varying degrees. My head doesn't work in a way that allows me to do a composite photograph. Uh, I will look at a scene and I will say, you know, I want this to be a little bit more mysterious. I want this to be softer. I want this to, uh, uh, to look more painterly. Uh, uh, so I, the tactics I use uh, move in, in that direction as opposed to creating an image wholesale out of, out of, out of other images or out of, out of parts. Um, I just don't, I don't work that way, and um, it's, it's fine. I mean, I, uh, I think one of the nice things about photography, and some of that's illustrated here, is you can have a very simple, straightforward image. You can have an image that's very highly creative and stylized, and anything in between, and that's, that's all fair game, and it's all fun, and it's all worthy of, 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 of being observed and looked at which is why you make a photograph in the first place. You want people to see it. For folks who are, you know, emerging as photographers, regardless of your age, you can emerge as a photographer, um, the advice I'd give is, is that um, it's really uh, don't let the equipment drive what you do. Uh, let what you want to do drive what kind of equipment you have and how you, uh, how you use it. Um, have some fun at it. I mean, one of the joys of being an amateur photographer is, is you're free. You can make things that you like, uh, that you're interested in. You're not dependent on other people coming in and, and validating that or, or, or paying you for it. Uh, you will very much find an audience if you, you know, if you try, if you put things out there. Um, I'd also encourage people to, to print their images and to show their images in print. It's a very different experience when you see something that's, uh, that's been done, that's been done well, that's on the wall, as opposed to 72 DPI on your cell phone because you're looking at Facebook. So uh, those would be, my advice would be to, 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 to have fun, to learn the rules, learn the rules, rules well, then break them and um, enjoy yourself.